the reason why I decided to take on this role was because I didn't think we had enough visibility in our area, uh, especially in terms of food security and other issues that we're facing in the wake of climate change. And we have to increase that visibility, not just on a global level, but also on a regional level amongst ourselves um, and especially amongst policymakers and decision makers at the importance of what's going to come in the very near future because we have to make the change and we have to make it now and really we don't have much time left. So what inspired me to get into environmental conservation was um, at a very young age, I was very passionate about nature, I enjoyed nature. And, but at the very same time, I saw the destruction that was happening. Uh, so we're here at the 15th World uh, Forestry Congress in Korea, and it's a golden opportunity for us to start working towards raising the awareness of the importance of forests. And forests are not just about trees. There's so much more than that. They have so many ecosystem services, for example, the provisional or be it regulatory um, service or culture and heritage. And they really form such a big part of our lives, especially indigenous peoples and local communities who are the custodians of these forests. But it's also up to every and each single individual who can do their part in helping restore uh, the degraded lands and forests and woodlands, but also take care of whatever um, forests are, intact forests there are as well. We shouldn't resort to restoration as a crutch um, and uh, exploit and plunder the remaining forests there are. We should look towards how we can utilize it in a very sustainable way to leave it to our future generations and every person has a part to play and I would like to call on everyone to really um, uh, follow on to the UN General Secretary's uh, call to turn the tide on deforestation. Traditional knowledge is very, very important to us. It is only when we bridge the past with the present that we can forge forward to the future. And one such example is what we've done in the Royal Botanic Garden, where we've taken the Hema system, it's our traditional pastoral system of how we manage our rangelands, and we've reintroduced that system back into today's uh, rangeland management program and has given hope to arid and hyper-arid uh, areas which will be affected by climate change, mostly affected by climate change, uh, because the average rainfall there is less than 300 millimeters per year, can you imagine? But they are still functioning system if we adopt this um, rangeland uh, uh, management system. And I think today in, in this Congress, we have a golden opportunity again, as I said, um, to do so.